There's a lot of people that don't like me. Uh, they think I'm a loose cannon. They, they think I have bad information. But, uh, and, and people make mistakes. I ain't saying I don't make mistakes, but my heart is in the right place. I want to help people. Uh, I, I, I want to bring people together. I'm not doing this for money. I don't make anything off of this. And I'm not trying to develop a political career. It's just I have seen, we, we have been in a period of stagnation for so many years. If, if you don't talk about issues, they don't get fixed. And that's how the drug epidemic kind of snuck. I mean, people think it snuck up on us. No, it took it like 20 years. It was in the making in the late 90s. So I'm just trying to bring awareness to things. And, and, and I, I got a lot of flack over the Trump rally because people said I was making uh, Huntington look bad, that I was focusing more on the protesters. But there's real issues, and I try to be objective. Uh, I'm the kind of guy, we can sit here and talk. Uh, we can have a discussion about something and I may leave here convinced I may change my mind and that's what I think that we're missing a, in a government around here we're missing negotiation and debate and and it's not a matter of I think of the mayor is king and he just tells people how it's going to be and, and that's what happens I think we need to have everybody working together and and that's what I try to do I mean I may say something on my page but if, if, if you make some good points and everything you may convince me that I was wrong and you're right and I, I, I think that's how we're gonna make Huntington better is by sharing these ideas and maybe changing you know not giving in but just taking a look at other people's point of views and, and maybe realizing that uh, somewhere in the middle is is where we need to be. I'll tell you what, this is a real big day because this is symbolic of the community coming together. Uh, Dwayne Woods of Heroin Hearst came here a few weeks ago. Uh, dug around, came up with all of these needles that were a hazard to the public. He even found one needle that was uh, had some heroin still in it. It would have been tragic if a kid would have stepped on it. Uh, so we had some people who were real concerned about it. My friend Todd Sweeney and some other people decided, hey, let's go down here, let's clean this thing all the way up, let's power the worship, and let's paint it. We got the whole community involved. Councilwoman Tina Brooks donated some money for the paint. We got uh, the bar pad up, we had a Rio Grande, the restaurant on 4th Avenue, and even Lowe's over in South Point donated some stuff. So people came down, donated their time. It was hot yesterday. Uh, they were able to go in the paddock and clean, uh, you know, cool down a little bit. But the symbolic thing is, you know, this is the community coming together. This is the community going to not wait for the city to solve the problem for them. I mean, if we were going to wait on the administration to get down here and do it themselves, it never would get done. So the community got together, got this done, and this, as far as I'm concerned, this is the first step in taking our community back. Well, in 2011, I wrote the book Money Town, which was really my first look into the drug crisis that was going on. Back then it was Oxycontins, and it was supposed to be kind of like a warning of what could happen. And I remember going on the Tom Roten show back then and uh, talking about, it was really the first look at the drug problem in Huntington. Uh, and then I've gone on, I've written four, four books kind of in that vein, kind of about the drug problem in Huntington. And I got them all together in one called Tales of the, from the Huntington Drug Epidemic. And they're all cautionary tales. And they look at it from all different angles. It's fiction but it, it, there's a lot of fact in it, and it looks at it from the police's angle, it looks at it from the addict's angle. It just takes a good round look and add it all. The news is really bringing awareness. It's really, I, I thought the first step to trying to solve a lot of the city's problems that were going on and, and, and trying to help was to bring awareness to it. And there's been a lot of controversy like by having pictures of overdoses. I mean, I hate to put pictures of overdoses up too, but, 
but it's like you've got to raise awareness and, and right now I'm just putting all these pictures and needles up like the ones that came out of this tunnel because sometimes you just have to shove it down people's throat in order to get the community together and that's where we're heading right now. I, mean, I think we got the community coming together and I, and I think once we do that we can do anything. You know, I guess some people love it. Uh, I'm starting to get recognized. I went to the Trump rally the other day and I had four or five people wanting to get their pictures taken with me and, and I was I was filming the Fox News guy and all of a sudden I heard somebody go, alligator. I mean, there's people that I, that I don't know. You know, I'm going to the Burger King drive through window and people are introducing themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's just a great feeling to know that, you know, people are on my side. But, you know, there's always a flip side of that, and, 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 and no matter what you do, people people twist your motives or don't understand your motives. So, while there's a good side to it, you also feel like you're a bad guy. There's so many things that go on uh, that people. I think there's a lot of things that the city don't want you to know, and and there's things that don't get reported. Uh, and that's what I try to do. I think I brought a lot of attention. I think I was the first one reporting on the drug epidemic in Huntington. And, and uh, I think this whole city's been in denial about it for years. I, even going back, you know, 2011 is when I started writing in a blog and started writing books about it. And back then when Kim Wolf was mayor, and he was campaigning, he was campaigning in two, for the 2012 election on how safe Huntington was, that, that the murders were down like 35% and that uh, it was safe to walk outside at night and everything. And then on the election day of 2012, there was a double murder. Uh, two drug dealers got killed and I thought that was symbolic of the whole thing. And then, and then once Steve Williams came in, I started communicating with Steve and he didn't want to hear about the drug epidemic until it just got so much in their face. But this is really something that's been going on since the late 90s. I think it's the biggest problem because it creates other problems. I mean, uh, you have people dying. Uh, it's going into every neighborhood. Uh, it, it's it's making quality of life a lot worse, but it also affects other things. It's like a domino effect. You know, it's hard to get companies to come in here and want to build places and to uh, put uh, companies in here because uh, of the problem. You know, they don't want to come here and build because of the reputation Huntington has. But also, if they do get employees here, they do come here and build a plant, it's hard to get a lot of quality help to pass drug tests. And then for stores, we're losing another uh, business right down the street here. Big Lots is moving over to uh, South Point, Ohio, in the old Kmart building because it's just a shoplifting problem is so bad through here because you have all these you know, addicts trying to come up with money any way they can. have to get detox beds somehow and me and Steve have actually talked about this before and he agrees with me. Last year after Prestero lost funding they went down to eight detox beds in all of the city. Now there may be a couple more have been added but I still we're still in the neighborhood of eight to twelve detox beds for, and that's for all of Cabell County and we have people dying waiting to get a bed. I mean the, the waiting list what we have to do, there's a lot of grants and it's doing some good things, but when you take all this grant money that's going around and maybe rent I mean, these old buildings, old schools, and just build emergency like mash shelter, you know, mash uh, hospitals like they had in, uh, in, in a war, you know, on TV show MASH and stuff, and just not make it a sustaining industry. You know, we, we don't want rehab to be a, a, an industry because, you know, it, we, we just want to come in, get everybody well, and go out. I remember for years watching the local news with my mom, so I've always admired the media, and, and you know, it, it, it kind of disappoints me that they kind of shun me. They, they don't want to take me seriously. I live in 
pretty bad neighborhood, and sometimes now I, I walk in here at two or three o'clock in the morning, and I'm thinking, you know, what happens? Or if somebody don't like Alligator Jackson, what if they come up in my face, and I'm gonna switch that thing on Facebook Live and just show it to the world, and hopefully somebody will call the police and, instead of applauding. It's the people, and. There for a while I was beginning to not believe because you, know, you see so many bad things, but here lately uh, I have a good friend Patrick Stubblefield who has cerebral palsy and, and he has to crawl down steps just to get to work and we uh, put some things on Facebook and people, man, the support was just tremendous. It's same thing with this tunnel, man, the, the support has just been tremendous. People come together, they want to participate. Uh, it's, it's just it's just a matter of giving people the platform to do it. And I think for a long time, people just haven't had to do it, but social media is starting to put up the opportunity. I think for too long, people just sat back in their bubble and was just content to, to take what the city would give them. But I think now people realize we can't wait for that to happen. And thanks for everything, it, it, and I couldn't do it without everybody else because I get letters all night long, people sending me tips, and, and uh, my goal has always been to stand up for the little guy and uh, fight for the people that, that might not be able to fight for themselves, and it involves bringing everybody. I can't do that by myself, but whenever I uh, bring other people together, we can we can do something to this drug epidemic.